Pinocchio. A son for Geppetto. Once upon a time there was a friendly cricket named Jiminy. One night Jiminy Cricket's travels took him to the workshop of an old wood carver named Geppetto. Ticking clocks, musical boxes, and wonderful wooden toys filled the room. Geppetto is putting the finishing touches on a new puppet. I have just the name for you, Geppetto said. Pinocchio. Then he added softly, he almost looks alive. That evening at bedtime, Geppetto looked out of the window. Twinkling up in the sky was the wishing star. I wish Pinocchio were a real boy, he said. Soon Geppetto and his cat Figaro were fast asleep. Only Jiminy Cricket was still awake. Suddenly, a bright blue light filled the workshop. The beautiful blue fairy appeared. Good Geppetto, she said gently. You have given so much happiness to others, you deserve to have your wish come true. Waving her hand over Pinocchio, she said, Little puppet made of pine, wake, the gift of life is thine. Magically, Pinocchio began to stir. The blue fairy asked Jiminy Cricket to be Pinocchio's conscience, to teach him right from wrong. Prove yourself brave, truthful, and unselfish, the blue fairy told Pinocchio, and someday you will be a real boy. And remember, Pinocchio, she added, be a good boy, and always let your conscience be your guide. And with that, she disappeared. Geppetto woke up and saw Pinocchio walking and talking. At first, he thought he must be dreaming. But then he realized his wish had come true. Geppetto was so happy, he began to play a merry tune for everyone to dance to. The Puppet Show The next morning, Geppetto sent Pinocchio off to school. But on his way there, a fox called Honest John and a cat called Gideon spotted him skipping along. Honest John cried, a live puppet without strings. He could sell him to Stromboli's show and make lots of money. The villains convinced Pinocchio that becoming an actor would be much more fun than going to school. Jiminy tried to stop the little puppet from leaving with the fox and the cat, but Pinocchio was too excited to listen. That night, Pinocchio sang and danced in the puppet show. The audience clapped and cheered with delight. Pinocchio was a star. After the performance, the little puppet asked to go home. Stromboli, the owner of the show, roared with anger. He locked Pinocchio in a cage and bellowed, This will be your home now. Suddenly, Jimmy and the Blue Fairy appeared. Pinocchio, why didn't you go to school? The blue fairy asked. The little puppet was afraid to tell the truth. Two big monsters with green eyes, he fibbed. Well, I... As soon as Pinocchio told the lie, his nose began to grow. Perhaps you haven't been telling the truth, Pinocchio, said the blue fairy. A lie keeps growing and growing until it's as plain as the nose on your face. I'll never lie again, promised the little puppet. The blue fairy gently touched Pinocchio's nose with her wand and turned it back to normal. She unlocked the cage and Pinocchio and Jiminy Cricket ran back to Geppetto's workshop. Pleasure Island As Pinocchio chased after Jiminy, he met up with Honest John and Gideon again. This time they persuaded Pinocchio that he was ill and needed a holiday at a wonderful place called Pleasure Island. Pleasure Island sounded perfect to Pinocchio. Jiminy tried to stop the little puppet, but Honest John and Gideon were tricky. They whisked Pinocchio away before Jiminy could catch up to them. The two villains sold Pinocchio to a wicked coachman who put him on a coach full of very noisy, naughty boys. Luckily, 
Jiminy was able to climb onto the coach just as it drove off. Pleasure Island was like a giant amusement park. The boys could have anything they wanted and be as naughty as they liked. While Pinocchio enjoyed all the ice cream and sweet treats he could eat, Jiminy searched for the little puppet. He was sure something was wrong with Pleasure Island and wanted to get them both out of there as soon as possible. Finally, Jiminy found Pinocchio. He begged the little puppet to leave, but Pinocchio refused to listen to Jiminy. He wanted to stay and play pool with his new friend Lampwick. Jiminy knew he would not be able to change Pinocchio's mind, so he decided to go home on his own. But as he was leaving, he saw the wicked coachman loading crates of donkeys onto a boat. One of the donkeys was crying and begging to go home to its mother. Jiminy was shocked. Somehow all the boys on Pleasure Island were being turned into donkeys. Jiminy raced off to save Pinocchio. By the time Jiminy found him, the little puppet had already grown long, hairy ears and a tail. Come on, quick! cried Jiminy. This way, Pinocchio. Pinocchio followed Jiminy up a steep cliff. When they reached the top, they jumped into the sea and swam home. Cold and tired, they finally reached Geppetto's house. But all they found was a note. Geppetto had gone off looking for Pinocchio across the sea and had been swallowed by a big whale named Monstro. The Belly of the Whale Pinocchio was determined to find his father, no matter how dangerous it would be. So he and Jiminy headed back into the sea. Pinocchio and Jiminy asked the fish and the seahorses for help. But as soon as they heard Monstro's name, the sea creatures sped off in terror. Meanwhile, not too far away, Monstro was waking up from a long sleep. The whale was so hungry that he gulped down a large school of fish. Without realizing what he'd done, he swallowed Pinocchio too. Deep inside the whale's tummy, Geppetto thought sadly of Pinocchio, how he wished he could see him one more time. Just then Geppetto felt a tug on his fishing line. It was Pinocchio! Pinocchio and his father were overjoyed to see each other again. But they still needed to escape the whale's stomach. Suddenly, Pinocchio had an idea. We'll make him sneeze, he said excitedly. Pinocchio and Geppetto built a fire to fill Monstro's tummy with smoke. Pinocchio's plan worked. As the air around them filled with clouds of black smoke, Monstro gave an enormous sneeze. And out they all came on a little raft. The whale crashed through the water, and the little raft toppled over. Everyone was thrown into the sea. But Geppetto couldn't swim. Pinocchio kept his father afloat and dragged him to the shore. A real boy. Moments later, Jiminy found Geppetto... Figaro, and Cleo the goldfish safely on the beach. But the little puppet was lying face down in the water. He wasn't moving. Heartbroken, Geppetto took his son home. Geppetto knelt over Pinocchio and wept. Just then the blue fairy's dazzling light filled the room. Prove yourself brave, truthful, and unselfish, and someday you will be a real boy, the fairy said gently. Awake, Pinocchio, awake. Pinocchio blinked his eyes and sat up. He was no longer made of wood. He was a real boy at last. Father, I'm alive. See? Pinocchio cried out in delight. Jiminy proudly watched as Pinocchio and his father happily played. Now he knew, if you wish upon a star, your dreams really can come true. 